Let's have a beautiful experience. In this video, we're going to be talking about penis health. Foods that naturally raise your testosterone, your human growth hormone, all kinds of diets and everything you need to know. It's a beautiful thing. You gotta love it. Alright guys, before we get started, please do me a huge, huge favor. You know, please make sure you ring the bell, tell a friend, subscribe to the channel, and of course follow me on my social media. You know, I go by, you know, Jesus underscore Detroit on Instagram, Snapchat, I'm Young Dago. And um, what I really want to talk about in this video is you know the types of foods that you can eat to improve you know making your penis bigger thicker longer stronger and harder it's one of my uh, you know I'm, I am a you know a coach this is what I do I have the big cock consciousness the big cock collective if you guys want to get in my inbox and Skype that's what I'm about but I'm gonna be giving you guys some uh, valuable information that's gonna help you just you know make better decisions about how you go about your day and just setting the proper intentions about making your penis, you know, healthy and helping you grow. Because that's what I want, man. I want everybody to just, you know, I intend on everybody to just be their best versions and, you know, show, you know, be proud of who you are. So without further ado, I'm going to get into this and tell you guys about, you know, some of the things that I realized along the way and help you guys out too. Now... You got all these types of diets out there, whether you're a vegan, whether you're into the paleo diet, whether you're a carnivore, and what does it all mean? Like, what, like is it all this stuff like raising your testosterone, getting rid of your testosterone? I'm going to say this. If you're not in a physical shape that you are in appreciation of and you feel like you can definitely improve, then it's time to start, you know, figuring out what the what's going to help you be your best version. And what I mean by that is, you know, do you have to be a vegan or anything? It's like I don't, I don't, I don't believe in that. You know, I feel like teach their own. Um, it's not necessary to go plant based, raw, or uh, you know, any of that type of stuff. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that there isn't huge benefits. And, you know, being a vegan, and especially like with the millennials and this whole, you know, movement of wanting to just do better for the environment. And, you know, I totally get that. I understand you. That's a beautiful thing. You keep doing you if it feels right, if it's keeping you smiling and keeping you just, you know, in a, uh, a positive state of just being, man, just keep doing it. But... If you're finding yourself where you're lacking energy, you're lacking, you know, problems in the bedroom, you're not feeling 100% you, this is where it's time to start incorporating some extra magic into your life. What do you mean magic? I'm not just talking about any types of drugs or anything. If you guys want to check out my previous video where I talk about erectile, you know, erectile dysfunction pills in my experience, you know, the link should be around here somewhere. And, um, you know, what I really just want to tell you is, is, you know, there's a whole bunch of, like, aphrodisiac type of food that can actually improve blood flow and just that excitement and just causing you to grow. And, you know, we'll talk about a couple of basic ones that, you know, maybe you knew or didn't know. And it's like something as simple as a banana. Bananas are loaded with potassium. And just look at it, all right? It's phallic shaped. You know, usually that's 90% of this, man. Like, you got to, you know, your mind is visual. And, you know, the universe is telling you what you need for that area. So it's like, obviously, you know, banana is definitely something that's beneficial. I try to eat one, you know, every day. You know, are you going to go, you know, should you eat a bunch of them? You know, I don't know. I don't know what an all-banana diet could do for you. But I do know that it's definitely one of the most beneficial things for settling the stomach just setting the tone and keeping your flow right because that's something that I like to just, you know, I like to be, you know, have that all regular, have my system right, you know. Everything's got to be lined up with your chakra system and, you know, like, you know, your penis is on your root, your colon in there, and, like, I think that's, um, you know, your intestines, like, in your sacral area or whatever, but 
uh, you know, regardless, man, it's on that, you know, it's on your fire line, man, and this is what you got to take care of. So, um, I definitely, you know, definitely you want to take care of gut, you know, they call it gut health. And I mean, I don't really like that term for some reason. Yeah, gut, yes, my gut health, your healthy gut, and like, whatever that means. But, you know, so that's definitely some, something beneficial. And, you know, of course, uh, some Greek yogurt's good every now and then, too. But what I would say is, you know, a lot of dairy is no good for everybody, man, to each their own. Like, um, certain people can handle, like, a lot of dairy. And, you know, it's usually the story that you're telling yourself. If you're somebody that had lactose issues growing up, or you're not even, you know, it's unbeknownst to you that you even have one, the quickest way to know is every time if you're drinking a certain, you know, if you're drinking a lot of milk, and when you go take it, you know, when you're, you know, you're taking a deuce, it's coming out like soft serve, then you know what you got to change. You got to change the milk intake. And I feel that, you know, everybody's got a certain threshold on how much dairy and milk. You know, you might be, you know, a gallon of milk. You might be a cup of milk. Or you might be a sip, man. You might look at it and it might make you, you know. But regardless, man, you know, uh, just uh, with the milk and all that, just... I'd say a little bit is good for you just for, you know, the probiotics and keeping your stomach and spleen and all that stuff just clean. You know, it's a beautiful thing. So you definitely want to make sure that you got the base of your stomach right. And other things that we're, you know, we can really talk about is more, you know, aphrodisiac, you know, aphrodisiac line, you know, because, you know, does an eggplant, is an eggplant good for you? You know, I mean, hey, you know, I like, uh, you know, I like eggplant parmesan, you know, I like my melon johnny, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, you can talk to Sad Guru, and he'll tell you that, you know, if you eat the eggplant, it's going to make your mind, it's bad for your mind. He's got some whole big uh, story on it. I love that guy, man. He's really, he's an enlightened being. You know, if you've seen him around, he's uh, one of the, uh, he's like an Indian uh, guru, all over, uh, you know, all over the self-help, and he's really somebody that's just a beautiful, inspiring, knowledgeable person that can really help you out in certain areas of your life. Um, but you know, he says the eggplant's not no good for memory loss or something. But he, uh, but he says it with, um, you know, like obviously if you eat a lot of it, he goes, if you eat a certain amount, it's no good. But it's like when you look at the emoji. You know, in the shape of it, it kind of looks like, you know, it looks like a phallic shaped thing. And it seems like it would be great for, you know, your penis, man. Making it bigger, thicker, longer, stronger, and harder, man. That's what it's about. Um, but regardless about those vegetables, you could say cucumber and, you know, all the phallic shaped, uh, you know, vegetables. And, you know, are they, are they the way to go? You know, I, I feel like incorporating some of them is definitely a beautiful thing start with the banana that's where we're all uh, you know that's this that's all you need really you know banana is the potassium the stomach beautiful thing so now other types of fruits that are good would be the mango like a mango is supposed to be an aphrodisiac if you ever seen Seinfeld there was an episode where you know George lost his mojo and Kramer gave him, uh, you know, a mango, and, you know, he's like, oh, my God, it moved. And next thing you know, he was able to perform, and it was a beautiful thing. Uh, mangoes are definitely, um, you know, full of, uh, you know, a bunch of nutrients. And, you know, it's just going it, to, it's going to give you energy. Um, has it, does it make your uh, testosterone and all this and that? Uh, you know, any types of fruit and vegetables is definitely just going to help keep you healthy and keep you clean because that's what it all comes down to at the end of the day so mangoes is definitely something that's you know somewhat of an aphrodisiac and then they say watermelon is like uh you know it's supposed to be like the the via the nature's viagra as they say nature's via you never heard that huh? about watermelon being one of the best things for your melons down there and your snake and your piece Swinging at the knees. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Talking about watermelon just made me thirsty, you know. And I definitely love, you know, watermelon. It's a, a beautiful thing. And uh, <clears throat> what I find, you know, like when you eat enough of it, like, it definitely, you know, adds some blood flow to that area. Um... 
how like is it like Viagra quality? I wouldn't say that, you know. Um, it's just something that is great to incorporate whenever you break a fast. Whenever you just want to have like, you know, just something that just tastes good, man. It's you know, when it's sweet and it's ripe. Definitely helps you out in that area. I would definitely, uh, you know, it's definitely worth incorporating. And the fact that, you know, I'm a guy that I intermittent fast daily where, you know, I, I pretty much go 15 to 24 hours every day without eating. I put my meals at the end. And um, what this does for me is it really, you know, it, it cuts out a lot of, you know, food that you would eat throughout the day. Because I remember, you know, you, it's easy to have, like, you know, meat two, three times a day without even realizing it. You know, you could have, like, you know, you could have a bacon, you know, some type of bacon breakfast sandwich. You could be having, you know, a foot long at lunch. And then you could be having a steak at dinner. And you just had, you know, three sources of, you know, you had pork. You had other types of porks and turkeys. And then next thing you know, you had steaks. So you can definitely get a lot of meat in your, in your diet. But when you're, you know, fasting, it's definitely easy to just, you know, you're only having one meal a day, so it's just easy to just choose that. You know, today you just had uh, fish. Today you just had a steak. Today you just had chicken. Today you just did eggs. Today, you know what I mean? And that's the beautiful thing about intermittent fasting. And I talk about that in some of my other videos. You can definitely check it out. You know, I usually do it around uh, the full moon cycle because, um, you know, our bodies, you know, are 90, you know, 80% water or whatever. The, the lunar, you know, it controls your, uh, you know, it controls the tides in the ocean. It could definitely supercharge your fast. And that's something that I definitely recommend. Um, but, you know, to each their own. Like, you don't have to, you don't have to try this stuff. You know what I mean? It's just, if you want to just, you know, figure out your body, give yourself some type of, you know, a different, uh, a different feel and a different flow. It's definitely worth giving it a shot, man. And, you know, it's what I realized is, you know, the fact that I don't eat so much meat and, you know, I'm not like, like, because they will say like red meat's no good, right? But I'll tell you this, there's been times where I had like, you know, like, like a rare steak and it put blood flow right in the right place. You know what I mean? I mean, I tell you, like, you know, rock hard from eating a bloody steak. And you're going to be like, that sounds like, oh, my God, like, is that gross? Like, no, like, dude, you know, it all depends on, you know, where you're at. Like, I mean, I, would I say eating bloody steaks every day is good for you? No, you know, but I would say every once in a while, there's benefits and amino acids, and it's a good thing to put through your body. You know, can I say that plant-based food can uh, do the same thing? I mean, you know, there is maca. You know, it's a aphrodisiac. You got the black maca, the red maca. And, you know, they sell this stuff at health food stores. And it's like, are you really eating the Peruvian um, root of what it is? I mean, you know, they, they tell you that's what it is on the bag. So you got to take their word that, all right, this is black maca. And you're scooping it, you're scooping it as a powder. And it definitely works and gives you some power down there. I mean, it will definitely give you some um, added blood flow. And it naturally raises your libido, naturally raises your testosterone and human growth hormone. So it's definitely something to incorporate. You know, you can look into the black maca, which, you know, I guess it's not legal and or not recommended in California or something. And they got a whole bunch of, you know, other FDA opinions and, you know, I, Bottom line is I wouldn't take any of this stuff like, you know, a, like every moment of the day, every day. But I'd say incorporating it is definitely something that's beautiful. And that's what I find with my, you know, diet and philosophy, you know, because I start with my cock. Like, that's what this is about, man. You know, I feel like the root chakra, your balls, your penis, you want to have that as big as possible. You know, have a big piece of meat swinging between the knees. You have a big set of melons for the, you know, for the balls to produce the testosterone and human growth hormone. And, you know, I want to do anything that benefits that area. And I know maca is definitely one of those to help, you know, improve your natural testosterone. And, you know, I'd say do it every, you know, it's, it's worth trying every uh, couple days. I usually do it at the gym. You know, when I break my fast, you know, after I do my cardio and my groga, which is a whole nother uh, topic, you know, where I, uh, you know, do 
certain positions with uh, super kegels and a whole bunch of other ways of just getting extra blood flow and making your, you know, making that part grow, you know, because that's what I'm about. And, um, you know, you make that, you make that bigger with the grow gum. And then after I do, you know, my circuit or whatever, you know, we're talking 40 minutes of cardio, hour and a half of stretching and grow gum. Then I'll break my fast with some maca powder. And I've been doing this just because, like, I wanted to have that added boost before I go lift the weights, you know. Because to me, the weight training is like the dessert of fitness, you know what I mean. You got to have your main courses before you go straight to dessert. And, uh, you know, you got to work on areas that are more beneficial for longevity, more beneficial for producing natural testosterone, and just more beneficial for, um, you know, just... You know keeping you going man and that's why i'd say cardio is definitely number one you gotta incorporate and then you know the groga man getting flexible cardiovascular and uh flexibility are definitely the foundation to any healthy person you know and that's where i'd say the focus needs to be spent but i mean if you're somebody that's obviously already in that condition then you know you can go straight to the weights but you know teach their own so if you're uh you know if you if you um you know obviously like you know my you know I was talking about red meat being an aphrodisiac you know I'd say every now and then man it's good for you dude like it's it's just something that I I noticed that you know having a steak definitely makes you feel great it's a beautiful thing um you know plant based you got the maca which does about you know the same type of thing same type of vibe but going on the aphrodisiac side, I'd say some red wine is definitely a beautiful thing. Like, I noticed that, and then you're going to, you know, got the whole other camp of, is alcohol good? And it's like, honestly, like, you see some of my other videos, I say this. Alcohol, you know, is a bridge. And they don't consider wine and beer a spirit, you know, like tequila and whiskey and vodka. And reason being is something about the proof, like it's got to be past, uh, you know, 15% uh, uh, alcohol, like 30 proof, which puts it into li the liqueur uh, category. And, um, you know, 15% alcohol or, uh, you know, anything past 15% becomes a spirit. But bottom line is no matter what you're drinking, whether it's 2%, 1%, you know, all it is is, you know, just a longer bridge before you get to the spirit realm and that's what i you know that's what i say about that when like what do you mean spirit realm it's like you know like the lost boys like you know that bridge that i you know the guy yeah i'm gonna go i'm going there again with it you know i like to talk about the bridge where you can dance on it you know what i mean you can hang out on the bridge with some beers hang out on the bridge with some wine everything's fine everything's beautiful but as soon as you go into that spirit realm you're hanging on that bridge, you know, and you got Kiefer Sutherland saying, come on, Michael, come on, Michael, jump, you know, and then that's when you jump and you're like, oh, you know, and then you go into the whole spirit realm and the next thing you know, you wake up and you're a vampire and you can't be in the sun. It happens is what I'm saying, you know, I'm just joking, but <laughs> all I'm saying is, um, you know, the spirit realm is definitely when you're having those blackout moments. And you can black out from drinking a lot of beers. Everybody's got their own tolerance levels and abilities of what you can do. But what I'm really trying to tell you is wine is definitely an aphrodisiac, all right? So you don't have to th think that you're not going to be enlightened or healthy by drinking, you know, by having a, you know, a couple glasses of wine or a few beers every day. You know, it's just about your perspective on this whole um you know, and, and where you're at, because, you know, at the end of the day, diets can drive you crazy, and you give yourself the permission slip, you know, I mean, life is supposed to be a beautiful experience, man, like, when we're having fun, when we're smiling, when we're full up, that's when we're at our true selves, and, you know, sometimes, you know, food brings it out, but health is wealth, man, and you're going to have to make a few sacrifices along the way of, you know, what to give up and what to eat and you know that's just something that I find that helps me out you know and when you have time to just you know be healthy for that day like you know that you don't have to you know 
have that pizza today or you have to have that uh, you know extra piece of cake or whatever if you know you can get away with it big piece of advice for you is just do that man like because you never know like when you're not going to be able to like something might come up somebody's birthday party somebody made this somebody you know you're going to want to be able to partake on the party man and you're going to want to be able to you know not have that guilty feeling man you know because that's where it all comes down to like when you have those like those serious like anybody that's a serious fitness addict or just into their diet or any type of vegan or what you know whatever like we're talking you're gonna like just become insane with it where all right you know i don't eat mcdonald's like i then like you just like all right no fast food in your life that's one aspect or i don't eat meat so it's like now you're just like you know going down that rabbit hole like you can never have meat or you know i only eat paleo food like okay so i only eat raw like whatever it is man it will drive you to complete insanity and you know you're going to give yourself your rules and the way that you can bend them along the way and what i'm finding with me is just be able to you know if you can eat super healthy and super clean on a day do it because you never know the next one when you're going to be having a feast that's just unannounced man it can come out of nowhere and of course like you know the more clean that you do you're going to definitely want to you know break it up every now and then too like you can't just be clean 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 all the time you're gonna have to eventually have that pizza party or you know splurge and have the you know the the things that you like because you want your body to basically be you know acclimated in the sense of it's pretty much like you know fitness is a lifestyle it's always getting healthy fuel healthy food but you're still having fun and you're not knocking yourself off the off the rails when you're having yourself, you know, uh, you know, uh, whatever, some pizza, some cake, and you know, that's that to me, you know, chocolate, and you know, that's another aphrodisiac. I'll be talking about in a second, but any type of, um, you know, desserts, like that's what I really love, man. I love cannolis, I love muffins, I love chocolate, I love, you know, I love the sweets, you know. And speaking of sweets, you know, a lot of people will say. You know the world is your oyster right and to me that's a weird you know the analogy you know I look into it from a different perspective some people might never heard of it some people might not understand what oysters are some people might be grossed out at the end of the day it's a slug on a rock that's good for your cock you know and that's why I eat oysters it's full of zinc and uh, you know it's definitely something that's an aphrodisiac in that department you know it'll definitely give you some blood flow help you you know help that part grow and it raises testosterone it's something that you should incorporate every now and then now would eating oysters every day be a good move you know if it's possible maybe i like i said i feel balance is the key moderation this is where you find the most benefits like you know just eating the same thing every day you know i don't find i find that you're not going to get as much benefits as breaking it up like if you had oysters today you can have mac and tomorrow have a steak the next day you know and then of course you know some dark chocolate and some wine like these are aphrodisiac foods that will definitely improve that area now would you just have some supercharged sex food like if you had that meal like where you had like oysters dark chocolate wine and a bloody steak like you know, I feel like, you know, moderation, man, you know, that would be, that might be too much for that day. Maybe it would work. Um, I find that you definitely don't want to blow it out down there, you know. You want to be able to keep that, you know, pretty clear and, you know, going into days that you want to, you know, be able to have the benefits of, you know, splurging and partying, like, that would be, you know, key, you know. And going to the whole world is your oyster, I mean, you know, like, if you can have like if you can have the dream body like would that be the food that you would eat every day you know i mean it'd be like bill murray and uh you know groundhog day when he knew that he woke up the next day that it was going to be the you know the first day so he was eating uh you know like just a whole bunch of cakes and sweets and all that and he's like you know the girl's looking at him like what are you doing he's like i don't even got a floss and that's the truth man that's you know Another benefit that you should do is definitely floss and brush your teeth every day. That is something that I feel beautiful about. But what I'm really getting at is, 
you know, the sweets are the things that make you feel good about life, and you're going to definitely have to, you know, incorporate them if it's something that you like. Don't just, like, push them off to, you know, don't push them off uh, too long is all I'm saying. But when you can benefit, you know, day in and day out, day in and day out, and just be able to go super healthy, that's what I recommend, you know. And I feel like you should be able to have some sweets every day. Like, I, I want to make sure that I get at least dark chocolate every day. And anybody, you know, in here is listening to me rambling about food, like, go ahead and comment down your favorite chocolate bar, because right now I'm, uh, you know, I'm liking the Lint 85% dark chocolate. It doesn't have the alkaline in it. It doesn't have soy in it, like the Ghirardelli. And maybe you're getting something at Whole Foods. I, I just like the texture of that bar, man. It just feels good with me. Maybe you don't like dark chocolate, but that is definitely something that's an aphrodisiac in my life, man. I just... The, the meltiness of it, the richness of it. I like wine every now and then. It just pairs so beautiful with it. And that definitely gets me, you know, in the right mood down there. It definitely helps me grow and feel beautiful. So that's something, you know, something to think about, man. Some food for thought. Now, the world being your oyster, I mean, you know, I guess you take the analogy a little bit deeper. I mean, the world is definitely kind of like, you know, something that's slimy and, you know, you might not, it looks it looks beautiful, but you might not like the texture. But at the end of the day, it makes that part grow. And when you grow, you feel beautiful. And maybe that's what the whole oyster message is. It helps you be able to get to your sexual explosion, your sexual uh, chakras. And, you know, because like I said, man, that's beyond this body. Sex, you know, that whole feeling of sex is in this fire line. And that is in other realms, other dimensions, and you could feel it when you're in the astral realms, man. Like, I feel, you know, like this This is going to be another topic, but whenever I'm, you know, whenever I'm floating in the astral realms, because, you know, like I said, when I go to sleep, I'm dripping DMT every night. Some people snort for it, smoke for it, jab a vein for it. All I got to do is sleep and dream, and I'm floating and flying and growing, and I feel that whenever I'm, you know, in these realms, I still get an astral realm boner, you know what I mean? I'm getting the astral heart on and I feel horny and excited in my dreams. So that tells me that that feeling is a natural feeling to, you know, what we are at source. So being able to know that and know that this is all, you know, part of it, you know, food is pretty much the 3D experience, so to, so to speak, you know what I mean? But the feelings that you get transcend end of the beyond you know you can go there i mean that's really deep with it man and you know i'm talking about oysters and dark chocolate and some of my favorite foods that just help improve the mood and i definitely will say that man like you know if you never tried them definitely give them a shot i mean they're expensive but you know put it this way like i said an oyster the only reason I do it is for that area because you can see there's cheaper ways of just uh, eating hot sauce is all I'm saying, you know, and that's another thing that's great for your blood flow, you know, <clears throat> hot sauce, that's definitely something that gets your blood going, man, like you can definitely get excited and firm and gets the capillaries going and gets that blood flowing and, you know, it keeps you growing. So hot sauce is definitely something you should incorporate all that, uh, you know, it, it, it helps you burn fat is what it does too. There's a whole bunch of other benefits with eating hot food and, you know, something you should think about. So while you're thinking about that, think about this. You have those oysters, you're having hot sauce, you're going to have some dark chocolate, some wine. Bottom line is you got to find what works for you. These are all just, you know, things that can improve in certain ways and some stuff that you can try to incorporate you know you might not like an oyster you might not like dark chocolate but you might not even like beer but to me my analogy is your first beer might have been a beautiful experience it might have been something that made you sick but after a while you know a few cases you can't go a day without it so with that i feel like you know i'm gonna close this segment out um like I said, get in my uh, get in my inbox. I do Skype sessions. I'm a spiritual coach. Um, you know, a sexual mentor. I help people make their penises bigger, thicker, wider, longer, stronger, and harder. I help people, you know, naturally raise their testosterone and human growth hormone. 
and I'm here to help you, you know, be your best version, man. So definitely follow me on the social media, ring the bell, hit the, you know, tell some friends. You guys are beautiful. I love you guys, and I'll be seeing you around.